Howdy mates, good evening, how are we all doing? It is Tuesday, October 17th, 2023, and sunset has just occurred. And I'll be honest with you, this is one of the spots where I will not disclose the location, just because this is a, this is a special one to me and I would prefer it to stay a little more quieter over here so the point of this film is to share as to why our leaves change color well of course you know just a few weeks ago we approached the fall equinox and we're at the point where days are going to become shorter and then the nights are going to become longer. This is what happens in the northern hemisphere, whereas in the southern hemisphere it is completely the opposite. It is now approaching spring. So essentially what happens during the fall in terms of the leaves is Given that we, there is less daylight, there is less opportunity for chlorophyll to reach production. Chlorophyll is, of course, the pigment responsible for creating the greenery of a deciduous tree, which essentially means a tree that loses its leaves, sheds them, as it were. So, As that happens, you start to see different pigments in those leaves. And they can come in a wide range, whether it is orange, yellow, or even red. Now, typically, there is a different set of names for these pigments. But really, what's responsible for creating some of the red that you see which is especially common among oaks. It's a pigment called anthocyanin. And that stores large sums of sugar. In this case, it's most likely glucose. And given that there are longer nights and less chlorophyll production, anthocyanin, you're going to see more of that, even though it's always present in the leaf, even during the summer. But that is partially responsible for what creates the more brighter red, or purplish red pigments. It's also responsible for even how our fruits appear, such as blueberries, cranberries. Anthocyanin is what makes those pigments possible. Now, when it comes to yellow pigments, it starts with an X, I believe. I'm going to try to correct myself on it. I believe it's known to be as xanthophyll. And you can actually see some of it a little further down over there. It's most likely a form of maple. But of course, I'm not right next to it, so I can't clearly identify the tree right away. Now, another pigment is, of course, orange. And the pigment responsible for creating that is carotenoids. The same pigment that is, of course, present in as you guessed it, carrots. It's the same pigment. So for that very reason, you know, it can vary depending on the climate of the area, the soil conditions, how much water is present. You know, there, there's a wide variety of different factors in terms of the timing but we have began to reach towards peak. I mean, maybe give it another week or two, 
and all of these trees will have a change in color. Now this of course only applies to deciduous trees. This does not apply to evergreens, also known as coniferous pines. That's a general term. So you figure, since now there's not as much sugar production, or I should say photosynthesis going on, the tree has a couple of choices. It either keeps them, keeps the leaves, and provides extra measures to protect the tissue, or the tree will decide to store its energy, become dormant, and shed its leaves. Most often time, the leaves will be shed as a result. And so, that form of sugar, anthocyanin, or glucose, it will remain within the heartwood of the tree, and essentially where the twig meets and forms the leaf, it will be completely cut off. That way, photosynthesis slows down and mostly seizes for the time being. Now, another important lesson to also note is once the leaves have fallen, there's always the general rule of thumb that you should leave the leaves. And that's important because when you leave the leaves where they should be, that will allow decomposition to occur and I'll contribute to the formation of new soil. And as a result, a lot of our microorganisms, mammals, reptiles, even amphibians, they can use those leaves as a shelter place and as a means of protection from the elements. So, much as it can be unappealing sometimes, it's best to just leave them. And you figure, too, wind in the future can carry it off and put it to a different area that you may not necessarily be using. So it's best to just let Mother Nature take its course. Because it will. Well, anyway, I hope you all received a valuable lesson here from this film. Thank you for watching. And of course, Journey on a Journey is onwards. Take care, folks. See ya.